You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping SmackDown Live from October 31st. Halloween episode of SmackDown. Spooky. Which I think they actually did say the spooky edition of SmackDown or something something like like that. that. Yeah. (laughs) Did not follow through. Nah, not at all. Not at all. Uh, Unless you call the the Fashion Files episode a spooky one. I guess. Just because of the theme. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, the show opens with Shane coming out. Which yes. Is not a surprise. No. Because he's uh, he's got to have his face on everything. Pretty much. Yeah, he's been opening the show a lot. It's starting to turn into Stephanie. True. That's what it is. Yeah. Anyway, so he comes in, or he comes out, yep. and he says the reason why they invaded Raw was because Raw has always looked down on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. So they and, were the inferior brand. Yeah, it's always been like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, he basically said that the land of opportunity, you know, them branding themselves as the land of opportunity wasn't enough to make a statement, so they had to put Raw under siege. Yeah, it was funny because they he was trying to justify it in a strange way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's then, like we're gonna we're gonna try underhanded tactics to get you to see that we're just as good as you. Right. Yeah. The guys that are <laughs> formerly known as the faces. Mm-hmm. The baby faces. Yeah, so it was... It was something. Know. And then he makes reference to Kane beating up Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says that he really needs to step up the his game, so he's going to decide since Angle is the team captain of Raw, yep. he's going to be the team captain of SmackDown. Big surprise here, huh? Not at all. It, everyone saw it coming. <clears throat> I, I knew it was coming weeks and weeks ago. Well, yeah, it made sense because of the way that they were setting up for... Um, well, Angle coming back, of course. Right, and, and then, then the whole Under Siege thing. Yeah, and kind of Shane, the the his level of interactiveness had to kind of stepped up a little bit recently right, with yeah. his feud with Owens and everything. So it kind of like made sense that he was going to be involved in yeah. a storyline like this. Yeah, I, I, I guess. But so uh, we got kicked off right after that with the two out of three falls between Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Which the announcer did say it was for one fall. And I was like, wait a second, wasn't this two out of three? Yeah. And they well, said it. They're, they're really on. Well, he's big with the NXT crowd with the whole one fall thing and then the crowd. Oh, reiterates. you mean the announcer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the announcer. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So he screwed up when he was doing the. <laughs> yeah. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> but uh, for what this was, this was it was decent. Um, yeah. It was probably one Their of the best. better matches that they had. And yeah, I would say this was probably the best out of the yeah. three because the other two weren't very good. No, no. So, but um, I mean, again, two guys just trying to get it, you know, a feel for the other persons. I mean, especially the transition from NXT to the main roster is definitely different. There's obviously different styles. You probably have more freedom down in NXT to yeah. wrestle a different style. Anyway, yeah. I mean, granted, Bobby Roode's been, you know. Around I mean, the event, world. Yeah, yeah, basically. That's what they say. Yep, they did. So uh, the first fall was won by Dolph with a super kick. Yeah, it was a, it was a big super kick out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. It was actually nice. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of, because it was a little unexpected. Right. And then obviously the obligatory um, other person getting the second fall. Mm-hmm. Because obviously we can't have a two out of three falls match where someone no. wins two. No. And uh, this actually happened during the commercial break. Which... Yeah, they like doing that. Yeah, I guess so. Because I, you know, I wasn't really paying attention because it was the picture in picture thing. So mm. then they came back and they're like, oh, during the second and during the commercial, Bobby Roode got the pinfall, and then they showed the events, which Bobby just catapulted Dolph. He, you know, jumped up, hit his head on the ring post, and so you then, know the uh, thing where Cesaro knocked his teeth in. Yeah, that thing. I think um, that they still do. Yeah. Uh, Bobby kind of rolled them up and uh, got the three count. Yeah. And then at this point, the the crowd really started getting into it, which mm-hmm. is good, and it makes sense because there was going to be a decision made. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. So, and then uh, when they were going for the third fall, mm-hmm. Bobby Roode goes for the glorious DDT. Right, and then Ziggler turned it into the zigzag, right? Yes. So he ducked out of it, and mm-hmm. then Bobby— That was a good counter. Yeah, Bobby kicked out at two. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, 
He went to roll him up, and then they did that thing. Well, Dolph thing. set him up for the super kick at first. Oh, yeah, he was in the corner. He, well, he wasn't doing a super kick. He was doing switch oh, he was in right. music. That's right. That's yes. what he was setting up for. Because yes, sure. if you stomp on the ground, it changes the name of the move. Okay. I guess he gets more powerful at that point, right? That's what Shawn Michaels did. E- extra, He's charging it up. Extra points. <clears throat> um, but he went for sweet chin music, mm-hmm. and then uh, Bobby Roode ducked him, I think. Yeah. And that's when he tried to roll him up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they tried to do that thing where they each rolled each other up, pulling the tights. Yep. Um, Bobby, instead of rolling him up the third time, I want to say. Yeah, I guess he, he po- picked, picked him, him up, up and hit him with the DDT. Yep. And then he pinned him. And that was it. Mm-hmm. And then after the match, Renee got in the ring and congratulated Bobby on winning and becoming the third member of Team SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And then Bobby said... SmackDown up, Raw down. Hashtag yeah. under siege. I was yeah, like, that was really oh, Bobby. Really oh, bad. face Bobby, I should say. Yeah, it was. It was not. Yeah, really no. But hey, at least they're doing something with him and it's giving true. him a spot on the uh, SmackDown team. Yeah, it was pretty obvious he was going to be the team, uh, the winner of the match, though. Besides the fact that it was him against Ziggler. Yeah, there would have been no reason to have Dolph on it. Yeah, especially a a heel Dolph. Yeah, now you wonder what he's going to do next. Well, Well, I mean, I guess his whole thing now is just to elevate new talent. There's no reason for him not to be doing that. Right, so you got Shinsuke and then Bobby Roode. You also had Baron. Yeah, that's right, but that was a while ago. That was before the brand split. Yeah, but it still happened. It's true. And Um, then he had that. he, He elevated the Miz. Yeah. So, and it wasn't even like it was a new talent. It was an established talent that he helped make better. Yeah, that's true. Because that feud was really what kicked up the Miz to begin with. Oh, right, right. Because before that, he wasn't really doing mm-hmm. well, Was that when the whole thing with Daniel Bryan started? Too? Yeah, it was around then. Yeah. So that helped too. But right. I was saying that his feud with Dolph was around that time. Mm-hmm. So Makes sense. If he wasn't in that feud, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't. He, no, there's a chance he wouldn't be. Yeah, and they put on a good ladder match. Was that a last year's TLC, right? Yes. Yeah. Where we actually had multiple matches involving tables, ladders, and chairs. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. So uh, we go backstage, and the New Day is jumping around, and they are... They are dressed up in costumes. Yes. So um, Xavier Woods was dressed as Jimmy Hart. Mm-hmm. Big E was dressed as Akeem. The African Dream. Yes. And Kofi was dressed up as Brother Love. With all red on his face, which yeah, is fantastic. That was they they did such a good job. With yeah, it was it was definitely good costumes. Yeah, so they were what jumping around, throwing candy. They and were stuff giving like out that. candy. It was yeah. Halloween. It was. And then they had they ran into somebody. Yep. Who did they run into? They ran into Aiden English and Rusev. Well, I was gonna say they were both there. Yes. Um, and uh, you know they basically said that the new days, you know jumping around and acting stupid and when they could they should be serious because they may be under attack by raw yes and, and apparently candy is for dumb kids yes mm-hmm. it's a stupid holiday and then rusev says there's only oh, one holiday, holiday to celebrate rusev day <laughs> he was he, he's really liking his rusev day yep i'll then, tell you what this is a good running joke that they have on it is now, yeah and i really like the dynamic between rusev and aiden, aiden english. english yeah they, they complement each other very well <clears throat> who who would have really thought that aiden Nobody. english i would have expected him to be cut had we yeah talk you know said oh aiden english will be a regular on the show a yeah. year ago yeah no now you would have figured that both of them uh simon gotch being mm-hmm. the other one right would have gotten cut mm-hmm. at some point so um biggie challenges rusev to a match later well because on. he stomped on his candy oh, yes he did yeah That's rusev right. took the bucket of candy <laughs> that they were uh toting around dumps it on the floor and starts stomping on it and then the, the new day all freaking out and biggie's <laughs> like you you don't do that to my candy and he's like he's like going nuts he's like you and me in that ring tonight and mm-hmm. Rus- rusev's like all right yeah. and then they just walk away and they Two perfectly matched people. Well, they're actually similar sizes. Right, exactly. They yeah. have similar styles. Yeah. Because um, they're both big guys that can move. Man, I, you know, the New Day really did it, you know, for themselves. I mean, it's not like they were handed everything. Well, you mean like they got themselves over? Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they were first heels, right? Mm-hmm. And then they just, they did what... They were the way you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to be brought in as a heel, build yourself up as a face, and then that's when they turn your face. Yeah. 
So and, uh, well, you get you get the fans behind you absolutely. By, by being the bad guy or mm-hmm. doing things that are while in your heel persona. Yep. So uh, probably go to commercial and we go to, or maybe it was in the same segment where we. Uh, it was probably commercial. Yeah. Get another backstage segment with Becky and the women's roster plus James Ellsworth and, and Lana. Oh yes, and Lana. Well, I, you said the women's roster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, she was basically giving them a pep talk. I like the Survivor segment. Series and everything, and then James Ellsworth starts barking. Which he was dressed, dressed up, up as a dog. Yes, I know. Okay. Getting to that, it was in the notes. Yeah. And then uh, Becky has a water bottle in her hand or a spray bottle, and she starts spraying him. Mm-hmm. And then Natalia walks up and says, "Oh, I'd love to be a part of. Oh, I'd love to be team captain of the uh, SmackDown Women's team, but I have to defend my title, or I have to, yeah, defend." She the, said, "Defend, defend her the title, title. Yeah. but she's okay. not defending yeah, her yeah, title." Yeah, because I was like, "Wait, she did say that." Yeah. Um. So this was the only segment for the women. Yes. But you know, whatever. No, I, I know. I just feel like they always have to toss in a match. They usually do, yeah. but I think. I think There's them nothing, not doing not much it. To build on. Yeah, I was gonna say them not doing it, and the whole roster was there, or the well, the whole Smackdown. Becky saying that they need to work as a cohesive unit. All right, is fine. Next week, they want to throw Charlotte and Natalia again, mm-hmm. or, or Becky and Natalia in a match. Makes right. sense because yeah. of what I don't like you talking about. You know, you being the captain when I'm the captain or something yeah. stupid. Like yeah, that. exactly. So that would that would make sense. So that's something that they could do, and it would be cohesive cohesive storytelling, which mm-hmm. is what we talked about on the Raw. Yeah. So. That's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was no need for them to have a match if they're no, whole I, like, point No, like I said, to, I feel like WWE always feels like they have to put a women's match mm-hmm. in there. So, and like I said, we're, we're building to this story is actually making sense kind <laughs> yeah. of. So it's good. Progress. Yeah. Well, I don't know if progress is up next. No. No, actually, it was in the storyline. Well, this yeah. This is the best part of the... So we had Baron Corbin versus Sin Cara. Part. Trey. Um, um. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was nothing really special in the beginning. Mm-mm. Corbin was pretty much manhandling. Well, that's how all of the yeah, matches have gone Trying so to rip off his mask and everything. Yeah. And, then, and uh, apparently that really upset Sin Cara. Oh, yes. So they, I guess... Corbin, would he throw him to the outside? And then Corbin went after Sin Cara on the outside, and uh, they just... Uh, no, Sin Cara maybe threw Corbin Well, he out. lost it when he went after his mask. Right, and yeah. And that's when... I guess they got counted out, right? They, no, the ref just threw the match out. Oh, okay. Because they were just start. Yeah, Sin Cara was just beating the crap out of Corbin. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't, he wasn't giving up. They ended up, like, behind the announce table. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then uh, Sin Cara threw the, uh, threw, the yes. chair <laughs> a la uh, Braun Strowman throwing it at Roman Reigns. Yeah, he's a little bit smaller than Braun. Yeah, but it looked like uh, it wasn't the same result. Like, I think Corbin got hit with, like, the wheels or something like that. Yeah, Because well, he went through the audience and, like, just hightailed it out well, of Well, here's the thing. Braun Strowman can throw a, a, a chair like that, like with baseball. Ease, yeah. So yeah. it's not very hard for him to get a precision, I guess, throw. Whereas yep. Sin Cara's got to put a little more uh, yeah. oomph into it. So I guess the rumor had it that Sin Cara had just re-signed a contract. So part of the reason why he's maybe being showcased on TV. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't see, see them signing him longer is the reason why it benefits him. I, look, I, I, I think it's okay. We're giving you another contract. You're putting people over. Yeah. That's, that's probably possible. what it is. Yeah, that's possible. So, well, yeah. When was the last time Sin Cara was in a real, a feud? Before that, he might have been in a couple of two hundred five live matches. Yeah, that's it. Well, an actual feud. It's yeah, actual been years. feud. It's probably been years, or the since the Lucha Dragons broke up. Okay. Yeah, that'd be my guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, up next we have uh, Renee Young interviewing the Usos about their match against Dean and Seth at Survivor Series. Yep. Assuming, of course, both teams are still. Tag team champions. Yes, we have to reiterate shows. that. Um, because they kept keep on saying, if they're still champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the Usos say that if De- Dean and Seth are here to watch out because they're going to have the whole Raw right. tag team or, or the whole Raw division on lock. Yes. Um, and then Chad Gable and uh, Shelton Benjamin come up. Apparently, uh, Chad Gable speaks their language. He speaks the Uso language. <laughs> Um, it was bad. It, it was corny, it but was, it wasn't 
It wasn't bad. I don't know. It was pretty bad. But it wasn't meant to be good. No, I guess that's true. So I can I can live with it because mm-hmm. it got its point across. Oh, absolutely. So, but basically, what Chad Gable did was kind of like an Usos esque promo, mm-hmm. where um, he said one thing and then Shelton Benjamin answered to him, yeah. and it was like, uh, yeah, uh, I don't remember. I, I don't remember what they said, but he ended on new tag champs. Yeah, yeah, I think that was it. So, um, but it it was like you said, it was corny. <laughs> Yeah. But it wasn't terrible. At least in my opinion. It, it was a little cringy. So. But yeah. Hey, whatever. They, they Also, they said they spoke to Shane, mm-hmm. and they have their t- tag title match next week. So they're right. Yes. facing so the Usos official. next week for the tag titles. Mm-hmm. Um, so that brings us to our third match of the night, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So yeah. AJ Styles versus Samir Singh. Mm-hmm. Um, so before the match starts, Jinder comes out and cuts a promo, says that he's going to be the one to conquer the beast yeah. and that he will be forever known as the beast master. Yeah, I don't, I don't care about <clears throat> what Jinder has to say. All right. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Oh yeah, that's right. You had mentioned something about that. So do you think fans would be more upset if Jinder beats Brock clean or... If Jinder breaks Punk's record for days held with the title. That's not going to happen. I'm just... No, I, I, I know, but the casual fan won't know because they're obviously not going to refer- reference that Punk has the record. No, but you know WWE always wants to wash things out of history. No, but it's fine, but it's not going to be Jinder. It's going to be Roman. It's right. going to happen. It's right. just not now. I guess yeah, it'll have to be years down the line when the no, tit- it, it, the, when they remove the win brand it. split. Or he's he going to win it at WrestleMania it. against. But that'll Lesnar. be the universal title. It doesn't matter. It's just they're going to call it the longest reigning champion. Time. I got you. Um, either that, or they could send Roman to SmackDown. It wouldn't hurt him. If anything, it might benefit him because if the Shield reunion doesn't stick. Mm-hmm. For like a long time. Well, what if they keep having rating problems, and they bring Roman over, that and things don't change? I was gonna say that's not good. they. They know that though. That's not a surprise to them. I don't know. He's out there talking that he's the one with the making the ratings happen and things like that. That's because that's what he's told to say. <laughs> I know. No, if if they were really concerned about it, they would bring, they would put Cena back on and try to get him there more regularly. Yeah. I think they're comfortable with the way the ratings are, so they feel like they can have Cena. Well, they they they, they, did. they brought him to yeah. Raw for Roman, right? So, I think that well, because that's because they didn't know if this if this was their only opportunity at it. Well, it's I mean, true. it's not going to be obviously, yeah. but because I think when Cena comes back, or if Cena comes back, depending on mm-hmm. how everything goes, he'll probably end up back on SmackDown. Yeah. What will he do? I don't know. Probably take the title from Jinder. Well, that's what there's a lot of rumors. Like yeah. they had said that there was going to be a special guest referee in the match. Yeah, and that would set up a program between Jinder right, and, and Cena. Cena. Yeah, and there's still two, three weeks to yep. establish. I think it's two. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, two weeks to establish that. So I can't believe it's already two weeks away. I can't believe it's November first today. I know that. I'm just saying. I, 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 I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's definitely possible. That'd be I'd be okay with that, cause you know I like Cena. Okay, he's the best. But what if it didn't happen? What if Jinder holds it's, the it's title? It's not gonna happen. But what if it happens? It's not going to happen. But what if it happens? I, if nothing gets set up mm-hmm. between him and Cena, I guarantee he loses the title out of the Rumble. To AJ, probably. Maybe. All right. Just Still because my question. Oh, um. Immediate would be would be um, him beating Lesnar clean. Mm. And 10 years from now, assuming that the WWE is still a thing, yeah, um, it would be that. Because no one's going to remember yeah. well, one of the single those match. Those fans do. Um, mm. But then again, Goldberg never hurt Lesnar's. Yeah. Well, it's because he never saw it coming. Mm. But they could have played the same angle because he's downplaying... Yeah. Jinder is an opponent. Yeah. So, um, 
But yeah, that that right, like it would be like an outlash, like yeah, the next day. Mm-hmm. But then that would be it. Yeah, like the whole if Roman wins, we're gonna cancel our subscription. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, it's a very short term. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just thought it was funny. Yeah, just because people get mad. That's at true. stupid things. That yeah, don't affect anybody's life. Well, yeah, I know, except for the people that they're complaining about right and they're still paying to go see them and everything exactly like that. so so anyway back to the match aj actually gets to hit a styles clash on him and he took it properly which is always good to see yeah. no james ellsworth incident He's trying to die yeah um yeah. yeah this literally it was two seconds and this was very similar to what we said on raw with enzo beating up oh. sinkara right as soon as the yeah, pin... gender was in the ring <laughs> but when as the, the count three count three was count. happening yep. And then they beat down AJ after the match. Yes. Which I would assume whatever their December pay per view is, this will be a match. Yeah, it's um Roadblock. Yeah. I think. Probably I didn't actually look at the SmackDown one when I was <laughs> I'm looking pretty at the sure Raw it's Roadblock. Before. Um but, but yeah, he hits a coloss on AJ mm-hmm. and then he goes for another one, but AJ's like completely limp, so he gives up and yeah. he's like, Yeah, I'm not picking you up. Yeah. All right. Yep. So up next, the, we have a backstage segment in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Owens is uh, wrapping up his arms yep. with this with the tape. Sammy sits down next to him, and says, "I can't believe this." He's like, "I know. I can't believe Shane." Or <laughs> like, "I I 100 percent understand." Or I see. I knew that Shane was going to do this. Mm-hmm. Put himself as captain. Well, then, yeah, but Sammy was more cons- right. Wasn't he worried about not talking about not lo- winning the match last week and that. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm just saying that that's what Kevin said. He oh, knew what he okay. was talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about. Right. And then Sammy's like, and then I can't believe that Orton, uh, yeah. he's okay he's with the Orton winning, yeah. winning with the low blow. Right. And then so Owens says this theory that, you know, when he wins tonight that and he leads the team to victory at Survivor Series, that Shane's going to owe him one, and it's going to be the Kevin and, and Sammy show. And then, then, no, or it's this the was, Sammy right. and Kevin yeah, yeah. show. That's when... Sammy said it's gonna be the Kevin and Sammy. And show. I love, I love when they have interactions, and then Owens leaves, leaves and, and Sammy's Sam like... so giddy about the two of them being friends again <laughs> and looking at him. Yeah, he's just like, like, oh, what a away. guy. Yep, he's the best. Mm-hmm. And then we get a Bludgeon Brothers promo. Yes. Oh boy. Yep. Is there any payoff with this? Or are we just gonna get a one-off with the uh, Fashion Police? And, and then... then them, they're gone forever again. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just. There's no good that can come of this. Not really. I mean, you have a you have a tag team division with three strong teams, mm-hmm. the rest of which aren't shown on TV. And the only other ones with, like a, I guess, a bad guy persona looking is the Ascension, and they're uh, they're a hundred percent face right yeah, now because I know. they're. If anything, the the Fashion Police are technically the heels, heels because right. they're being jerks. <laughs> So it, it's a good dynamic between. Oh, the yeah, yeah, the two teams are great right. in those in mm-hmm. the skits. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, there's no good that can Mm-mm. come of it. So we kind of just write it off and say whatever. Yeah, I just hope that something good comes from it. Mm-hmm. So that brings us to a Big E versus Rusev. Yes, the, uh, probably one of the best matched matches in uh, a while yeah it was it was a good match only thing again i mean i complain about it not many people get bothered by it but the commercial thing the picture in picture oh i just feel like yeah. it takes away from a match i want to see yeah well that's technically not their fault no it's it's not. it's I know. just the they, they the need tv the ad, ad revenue and all that stuff. it's the it's the tv thing no i get um, it but yeah biggie still dressed as akeem the um african african dream, dream. And it looks so funny watching him wear clothes, yeah. Because of the way he moves, they all the clothes flop around all over the place. He's wearing like baggy clothes, obviously, mm-hmm. and he's used to wearing the singlet, so it yep. just looks strange. Um, but it was a, it was a fun fun match. There, like I said, the before. commentary was great during this yeah. match because we had the back and forth between Corey Graves and Byron telling mm-hmm. him to shut up. Well, because Byron seconds. likes candy too. <laughs> You were dressed up as a baby last year. I was. I was actually. I meant to because they when they showed the commentators at the beginning. Of I was the, disappointed. Yeah, Corey Graves was dressed in a regular suit mm-hmm. instead of the orange pumpkin suit, <clears throat> which I think they did some sort of Halloween video earlier in the day, and uh-huh. I think Corey was dressed as the Riddler or something like that, or they teased it. I Would don't make remember. sense. Yeah, he could pull that off. Yeah, but yeah, I was a little disappointed. Yeah, but, you know, I guess if you do it every year, it kind of mm-hmm. loses its. 
It's luster. Yeah. So at one point and toward the end of the match, Aiden English gets up on the announce yes. desk and starts singing Rusev Day, right? It's Rusev so Day. So then Xavier Woods, dressed up as Jimmy Hart, yes. comes over and starts playing the trombone and he has the uh the um the megaphone in front of the uh, trombone playing it louder. Yeah. Well he wanted the fans to start <clears throat> screaming New Day Rocks because then, that's what they were doing right. and that's what made Aiden English. Yeah. Start and then I think at this point, is this when Byron said, I don't know what Jimmy Hart's doing out there. And Byron, <laughs> and then Go- yeah, uh, Corey, Corey was like, you idiot, Saxon. That's Xavier Woods, not Jimmy Hart or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it was good stuff. Yeah. So then uh, I guess Aiden English hits Xavier Woods with the mic. Aiden English heads toward the ring. Uh, Biggie hits Aiden English with the big ending. And then Rusev kicks uh, Biggie in the back. And yeah, it was up, weird. Yeah, it was a weird. Yeah, because it was like a not really like a like a big move. It was just no, a but kick. it was just a blind side. It's like what happened last week with the tag match I between th- the New Day and. At the same time, I think that Rusev beat Randy Orton with a kick like that. Probably when he stole that quick victory. Yeah, because yeah, he bounced off the ropes and hit Aiden English mm-hmm. and then hit him with a kick. I believe yeah. you're right. So. Yep. It's funny how that story kind of led into this one, though. The Rusev and Orton one led right. into yeah. Aiden English and Rusev working together. Um, but yeah, I mean, just when, when I was talking about the New Day earlier, just when I was before this match, when the New Day came out, the insane pop. Mm-hmm. That was the most over uh, act in the WWE. Oh, absolutely. Probably they sell the most merch. Mm hmm. Especially considering they have so much of it. <clears throat> they probably yeah. have a ton they're, of they're shirts. They're just walking advertisements. I yeah. mean, everybody is. And, yeah. They have but... a ton of shirts. They have the booty O's. Mm-hmm. They have um, the unicorn horns. Did you see the guy dressed up with the unicorn horn? He had, like, zombie face paint on. I did not. <laughs> there was a Hulk Hogan in the uh, crowd. Was, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. up next, we got a, an interview of Sin Cara asking about the significance of his mask. And he says it represents his family and uh when he puts it on at home his son thinks he's a superhero yes which is like uh i think anybody besides him Mm -hmm. probably would have pulled that off a little better (laughs) um just because it's it's, it's talking under the mask too so it's not very audible yeah so it's a it's a it's a genuine thought Mm -hmm. but it's just since it's in cara it's kind of hard to take too seriously and uh, then he said something about going through hell to get the mask, so he'll go through hell to keep the mask. Mm-hmm. So it I wasn't guess... bad. You got, like I said, it's given Sin Cara something. Oh yeah, to that, do that, and... I'm surprised. Yeah, to be I perfectly know. honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously him and Corbin aren't done yet. Mm-hmm. I would imagine so... that eventually this will culminate in a U.S. title shot. Yeah. Uh, we go backstage <sighs> again. Well, to another, I guess, uh, backstage mm-hmm. area, and uh, Shane McMahon's playing on his phone. <laughs> And all of a sudden, Aiden English comes in and asks Shane how he's, or is how is Shane spending his holiday, or how is he enjoying his holiday? Mm-hmm. I think he said one of the two. And then Shane's like, "I love Halloween," and and English is like, "I don't mean Halloween." And then Rusev busts in and goes, "Rusev Day," and uh, so Rusev wants to be on Team SmackDown because of his defeat of Big E, mm-hmm. and uh, Shane says he needs to earn it, of course, because it's the land of opportunity. Yeah, you have because to do things in the ring. Because even though Dolph and Bobby Roode's matches that night were qualifying matches mm-hmm. and Shinsuke against Owens is a qualifying match, this doesn't mean not. that all the matches yes. are qualifying matches. So next week we're going to get Rusev versus AJ Styles. Yes, which is kind of not a surprise. Cause, no. Uh, going into it, since they hadn't announced anything, because we knew about Randy Orton last week and mm-hmm. then Shinsuke Owens this week. Like, well, and Shane, technically. Well, yeah, but I'm yeah. just saying that the other four, we had three of them locked in or going to be locked in. You kind of figured that AJ was going to be the fifth because this goes back to what I was talking about in Raw, mm-hmm. that how are you going to have a uh, have have a big four pay-per-view without one of the biggest names in the company right. on the card? It's true. So obviously it was going to be AJ because I don't think they're doing any other storylines. I don't think so. No, I mean, like, obviously nothing's established, but I don't think they plan on setting anything up. Oh, okay. I know nothing yeah. is established yet, but, mm-hmm. like, sometimes they just throw matches together like they did with Alicia Fox against Sasha oh, okay. Banks. Yeah. It's like, oh, we need something else. Mm-hmm. So, although, I guarantee if we do have that uh, Enzo versus Kalisto match, that'll be on the pre-show. Yeah, probably. 
Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. For... Yeah. Unless they throw a tag team match together or something. Yeah. That'd be cool, though. Let's we'll have, like, um, like an a eight-man tag or... or a, between like, four on four. Yeah, just have every... Are oh, they going to the... do a tag team one? Nope. No, they didn't say it's anything about it. It's just the two the title ones. Right. I guess so, you could just throw it in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it would have to be an eight-man tag, I think. Because yeah. all you can really do is Gallows and Anderson and Heath Slater and Rhino. Yeah, but... Oh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Yeah. And so Gallus they could do Anderson. a bigger team. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you would think they would put the New Day on there, too. Yeah, but they, yeah, because they could be in New the Day. New Day, yeah. Although that would make that not a pre show match. Yeah. If the New Day and Sheamus and Cesaro are in it. Right. Because, I mean, if, yeah, if you have Gable and Benjamin win next week and have them face uh, Seth and Dean, yeah, you have the New Day and the Usos, and the Usos together. And they're friends. Against Gallows now. and Anderson and Sheamus and Cesaro. Because the Usos are actually moving towards being faces mm-hmm. for whatever reason yeah so that would i would i would be fine with that, that. would make sense yeah so maybe yeah. that could get set up within the next couple of weeks yep all right cool all right we're planning yeah that would be good anyway uh so up next we have stranger things yeah wwe's blatant copyrighted yep. uh infringement it's best it's the best because they use the same font oh I, I, yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. so bad mm-hmm Honestly, I would I would imagine maybe you know they the, Most people the legal probably don't team care about free publicity too though. I guess that's true. You know, I they mean, probably like, went. To, yeah, it's, it's a parody. I don't know if there's some sort of clause in there for parodies no and stuff like that. Yeah, actually, maybe because you know Weird Al does the parodies. Oh, and yeah. it's almost made a exact, career of it. <laughs> yeah, so I guess maybe it depends if you if you slightly change it, it's okay. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Anyway, yep. um, they're in the right side up. Yes. That's what it said at the beginning of mm-hmm. it. Um, and the instead of having, like, strange captions underneath the pictures, it just had the five tag teams mm-hmm. on their board. With the Christmas lights around them. Yes, that was strange. But I guess that's the reference to For the, the show. Stranger Things, yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if it was, because I, 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 it's been a while since oh, I've seen right. the show. Yeah, I, you just watched, I just watched it, it, but yeah. I watched it when it first came out. Yeah, because that was what a year ago, something like that. Yeah, or six months. Maybe it was early. I think it was longer than six yeah, months maybe. ago. Um, so yeah, I guess it makes sense because usually it wouldn't come out in the same calendar year. Yeah, it, it, so it wasn't, probably, probably was last year. It wasn't quite as fresh in my mm-hmm. mind as it was for you. Which is um, funny because I meant to watch it so long ago because I heard such good things about it. And yeah, then I just had a Sunday where I wasn't doing anything. I was like, all right, I'm si- we're sitting down and watching it. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, you know, Fandango's oh, dressed okay. up as Hopper from yeah. the show okay. in his see, police uniform. See these these things? I got a. Oh yeah, because I got I'm like, what, right. what is What does that mean? So he goes and puts a plate of Egos at the table fort tent. They weren't Egos. No, well they at this point they were Egos. They're waffles. So uh, yeah, he he's handing frozen waffles mm-hmm. to um, to a hand underneath the desk. Yes. Um, and then Tyler Breeze walks up with a box of Uggos, yes. which is literally an Ego box, but they changed. They their photoshopped name. it. Yeah, yeah, they got rid of the yeah the um, the Ego part and made it Uggos. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Fandango goes, "Wait, you're not underneath the table." <laughs> it's like yeah. who's under there? Yeah, yeah. He said, "Yeah, because he was dressed up as 11. Yeah. Um, and, and then, then uh, Victor did, did, walks over. Oh, no, over. no, because Tyler Breeze is like, oh, it's probably the Ascension. They ruin everything underneath the table. No, you mean uh, Fandang? Uh, no, Breeze. Oh, said Breeze. It. Said, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, and then uh, Victor comes over mm-hmm. dressed as the girl that disappears. Yeah. I don't remember her name. Barb. Oh, yeah. Um, and then... It's literally in the notes. I'm going to read. <laughs> That's way too many words for me right now. All right. Um, so... <laughs> So he walks up dressed as Barb. Yeah, and then him and Fandango go back and right, so or, you didn't disappear. Or oh no, it was like Breeze. That? Yeah, or you're back. Yeah, or whatever. No, he said, "Oh, you're the worst character in the show. Of course you would have been Barb." He's All like, right. "Oh, I was. You should have nominated, um, nominated for an Emmy." Yeah, something like that. Um, um <laughs> and then, and the t- then, then Connor. No, comes. no, the table started shaking oh, the, at that yes, point. And yeah, and that's when Breeze said, "It's probably the ascent. no, 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 no." no. The, Are you the, sure? That, yes. I watched the clip before. Oh, okay. I could have swore that that's when that happened. No. And then Connor comes up. No, 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 no. Because that's the point when Ty Dillinger emerges from underneath the table dressed as 11 and says, I'm not 11. I'm, ten. I'm a 10. I thought, I thought that nope. that was the very end of this, the segment. No. 
Oh, okay. Oh, now it makes sense yeah. because of mm-hmm. what happened. After. Okay. Yes. yes. So, so that Ty Dillinger comes out, and mm-hmm. then Connor comes over. Right. Right, with a cane mask he's on. wearing a cane mask and then they're like oh we're under siege or attacked and then so they start beating him and uh he's like he takes off the mask and he's like tyler i told you i was dressing <laughs> up that has this and he's like yeah <laughs> i just thought it was funny yeah. Yeah. um but yeah, and then what the room goes dark yep and then the christmas lights start flashing and mm-hmm. it it shines only flashes a- around the bludgeon brothers on the wall wall. but there's no b in bludgeon brothers (laughs) it's silent yeah and then uh i guess they had uh the doll from uh saw yeah i was gonna say i think that's what they're going for henry or something like that no it's it's, um i should know this one why don't why don't i know this one Uh, anyway he uh, comes up on the screen says let's let the games begin yeah, so I'm it was a very a bad. Saw. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. Looking. It was very, very bad looking. Because when I watched it last night, I originally said, "Oh, that looks pretty good," and then I rewatched like it today. Jason and I, was like, mask. I was like, "Oh wow, that's bad." Or one of the Oscar masks, just white. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Yeah, probably. Billy, but, that's the name. That's it. Yes, you're correct. Yes. Anyway, Billy the doll. Yes. Um, but so, yeah, that, that was good. Oh, yeah, they're doing a good job with these parodies. Mm-hmm. And you give Ty Dillinger something to do. It's true. Dressed up like a girl. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Tyler Breeze isn't the only one that can do it. It's true. <laughs> I, I still remember the first time he did it when he dressed up as Nikki Bella. Oh, my God. I want to be part of... Breezy oh, Bella. I want to be part of the, the, the match at WrestleMania. Yeah. Is that what that was? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it was before that. Yeah, it was for the mixed tag team or something like that. Yeah. Because him and him and Fandango, yeah, versus John oh, Cena no, no, and Nikki no, Bella, no, right? No, that's not no, what that it was. Happen? It was Fandango against John Cena. Oh, that's right. Okay. Because Tyler Breeze dressed up as Nikki Bella because he was trying to get in that's into right. the match. Yep, yep. No, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> and then he was on the outside dressed up as Breezy Bella, mm-hmm. and then Nikki hit the the rack attack mm-hmm. 2.0 on him. Yes. That was fun. Ah, good stuff. And that brought us to the main event. Yes. With Shinsuke versus Kevin Owens, and the winner becomes the fourth member of Team SmackDown. Yes. Yep. It was a good match. Yeah. It wasn't. Didn't give it as much time as I expected them to. Yeah, it wasn't like a like a big match or anything. No. Um. So, not to anyone's real surprise, Sami Zayn got involved in the match. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he was upset about what happened last week. Yep. Um. He comes down, tries to. Tries to get involved. Yeah. And him, they, it looks like Shinsuke is kind of in the corner. And then, oh, yeah, Shinsuke was, he, uh, Owens was getting back up and Shinsuke was getting ready to hit the Kinshasa. And Sammy pulled him out of the ring. And so Shinsuke goes to the outside. But then I guess Sammy throws uh, Shinsuke into the steps. Or it was Owens that threw him into the steps? Then, oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay yes yes and so owens goes back in and uh, on the apron and goes up top and hits a frog splash on yeah. shinsuke and then uh, shinsuke kicks out yeah just barely kicks out at two so then owens is you know freaking out like he always does mm-hmm. and they they go to set the table up and i watched a replay and when ta- uh, sammy grabs the uh, front of the announcer's table and threw it it actually bounced up and hit a fan in the face Ooh. yeah wow yeah sure that won't end well probably not (laughs) that's funny there's blood blood everywhere what happened (laughs) um so because he wasn't paying attention the guy was looking at uh owens probably yeah no or or he's looking like byron when the announcers were standing up at that point uh, he was just standing over here looking that way and all of a sudden you see the thing crack him in the face ouch yeah it looked nasty so um it's at this point when they were on the outside Mm -hmm. and then Sami Zayn's standing next to the announce table Mm -hmm. And then Orton's music hits, yep. and then they're looking at the stage, and then Orton comes out from the stands and just uh, does a backdrop onto Sammy that looked like it was supposed to go through the table. Yeah, it did not. And he just landed on the table. And that I was feel it. like it probably hurts more when it doesn't, when it break. doesn't break than when oh. it does break. Because yeah. you have not, you're not like getting cushioned by no. anything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, that happened, and then Kevin was distracted allowing um shinsuke hit him with a couple moves and then yeah, he, he, set him up. he hit him with like a like a side like a rolling kick yeah i think and that then was he hit it. him with the kinshasa and then uh he pinned him yeah 
And that was the match. Yeah, so after the match, Randy Orton's just sitting on the outside laughing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sami Zayn's laying down on the table. Owens tries to, like, retreat up the ramp. He's like, Sammy! <laughs> Sammy, where are you? Ah, uh, good dynamic. Uh, just the two of them, just, like, it's mm-hmm. great. Because it's like they're brothers. Yep. It's like they need each other. So it's good. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown very, was, uh, Very entertaining. Better than I had anticipated and remember from the first time I watched it. Yeah, there we go. I'm glad you can get a better appreciation of the show after we talk about yeah, it. Yeah, sometimes I do. That does happen. Because, like like I said, a lot of the... I mean, I really enjoyed a lot of the backstage segments throughout the show mm-hmm. with Rusev and The New Day and mm-hmm. Stranger Things. But overall, the show wasn't bad. Yeah. It did what it needed to do. It's true. And and, was, and the stories aren't locked up and they're doing still stuff every week. That's true. Even that if happened, we are seeing... Dolph and Bobby still, but that, we that, had but, a reason. Yeah, I was going to say, that had nothing to do with, like, setting up for the pay-per-view, no, no. so. Well, te- yeah. Well, oh, oh. A, a future match between I gotcha. the two okay. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, so. should be, that should be it. Hopefully. Yeah. Unless, I don't know what the hell Dolph's going to do next. It doesn't matter. He could be off TV again for another That's couple of months. It doesn't make a difference. He can wait for when Drew McIntyre comes up. <laughs> and then just have the same thing with him. I don't know. Drew McIntyre was pretty. Uh, he he seems to make it a um, make it known that he uh, the end of the line was NXT for him. He wanted to be in NXT. He wanted dreamed of being NXT champion. That was his. You do realize that that's all stuff that they tell him to say. Yeah, right? I, I know. But when... but no, I mean I think that's what I I've read in an interview that that's what he wanted oh, to do. All right. I was gonna say maybe he's experienced the main roster once. Yes, but, but he it needed a, to grow and learn. Yeah, it was a completely like different yeah. story. Um, that but, the interview that he did on NXT a couple weeks ago was actually pretty good. Yeah, where he was talking about when he got released and mm-hmm. everything. So it yeah, seemed no, legit. Yeah, he, it might have been a little. They have a big star there if they do the right things. He just like you said, and I said that he looks the part of a champion. Mm-hmm. He's this big guy with mean presence. And, yep. Oh man, did you see? I know we're getting off topic here. It's true. Um, two weeks ago, I think it was Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch. Team they, together? Yeah, against uh, Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. And I, I think... can't believe that they <laughs> put those two over on Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch. I was but, so upset. Yeah. Because at first I thought they were, because I, I don't pay a lot of attention to intros. Yeah. And the f- music hit, so mm-hmm. I'm like, are they putting them up against the uh, the new Crime Time, whatever yeah, their name whatever, is? Yeah. I don't know what the, what their name is. Um, but all right, yeah, let, let's finish okay, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so that was our SmackDown review. If you liked our ranting and raving, <laughs> please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.